stop with the drug with you. Really? They show, of course. You're the new star, you know. Hey, have a hit of this. Now, you, you say try they. It. People in the studio or people on the street? Just say they. Okay. Street and in studio. Others have talked about drug problems, but few have been as candid as Nell Carter in this exclusive interview. Nell, who's starting her fourth season on Give Me a Break, revealed for the first time the secret she's kept hidden, even from those closest to her, for over two years. I did cocaine, the same kind that everyone else does in Hollywood. And I didn't want to go on the bandwagon, number one. I know that right now it's the end thing to get on, the, on the, a cover of something to say, yes, I had a problem. You know, it's the end thing to be the victim. So you have to understand, I had a show with children. I could have lost everything. I jeopardized my marriage, my daughter. I have a very respectable family. I mean, I, I could not, I have a cousin who at the time was mayor and she was on the council for, for, for the president. I, I could have destroyed all these people. Hit it, guys. <clears throat> Our day will come. From the age of six, when Nell stood on the front porch of her home in Birmingham, Alabama, singing Bible hymns, she wanted to be a performer. Her early determination led her to Broadway, where she appeared in several shows before winning a Tony for her performance in Ain't Misbehavin'. Give Me a Break was, in fact, her biggest break. But in the second season, Nell started using drugs to relieve the pressures of starring in a weekly television series. I've heard the story so many times from so many famous people that the world thinks has everything. And you hear about the, the anguish, the unhappiness. Uh, you don't know what unhappiness is. Being unhappy and being on cocaine is being afraid to answer the door. The phone rings and you know the police are coming to, to raid your home. It no longer becomes a home. You find one room. You stay in that one room and it's usually dark. You usually have music going. You usually have your television going, but you don't get on the phone. And then you try to crash, and you have to get up in the morning, which in tens means you have to have a swig of booze to get you together, come to work. Then in the middle of the day, you have to start it all over again. And then you spraying your mouth so the children won't know. And you realize, I don't want to live like this. Help me. And you can't get out of it. You can't. You just can't get out of it. It wasn't until the drugs began to affect her work and her relationship with her husband that Nell recognized how serious the problem was. Finally, in late 1982, Nell hit bottom, and she reached out for help. My friend Joel Thurm. Oh, yes. Yeah, very fine man. Uh, Joel came and got me wrapped me in my mink coat, put me in a limo, drove me to the basement. I will not tell you which hospital, but it was not Cedars. Put me in an assumed name, and I was in solid until I got well. You, you, you were going to say you were in solitary confinement? I mean, with the heavy... Sort of, yeah. Because I had to break it. That had to be hell. I don't believe this. Well, Catholicism, get it out, right? All right. Just brought back memories of it. It's okay. It's okay. Get it over with. So if anyone else want to do about it, at least I can have the truth out first. Even after two years, it isn't easy for Nell to talk about her experience or about another tragedy when her best friend and co-star, Dolph Sweet, died of cancer this year. Her therapy is to keep busy with her weekly TV show and her nightclub act, for which she received rave reviews. Nell says that although she's ashamed of having had a drug problem, she is proud she could overcome it. Our day. <laughs> I'm extremely happy with myself. I don't need cocaine. Now, but let me tell you something. You never ever, ever